Hey, Silas here. This is going to be a video about art. I'm going to discuss what art is to me and give some ideas on that. And also recount some of the things that just went on at this philosophy group I was at. This philosophy group is the same one that I went to when I was talking about in the video, What is Love? So there'll be links to that below. But let me just get right into it. With art, I personally consider myself an artist to an extent. I like visual art. A lot of the stuff behind me is uh, stuff that I've drawn, stuff that I've thought of, helps me figure things out, work things out. There was a time when I realized that a lot of the art that I do, a lot of the most personal art that I do, which is like with these characters, like this character right here, and these two characters right here, I'll get into that soon in a couple of other videos and a couple of other projects. But it got to a point where I realized the most personal art I did were things that I kept to myself. It was more of a language of how I understood different concepts in my life. And there'd be a time where something would be very stressful, then I would be drawing a lot, and I'd realize, okay, I'm trying to figure this out through that process, try to understand something in that. So what is art? What is the actual core of art? So at this philosophy meeting, we were talking about different things, this meetup. And my main question, to begin with was I thought it was very important to establish what the earliest form of art is, earliest agreed form of what art is, and what the purpose of that art was. Then now we can build up to understand why is something considered artistic now versus fine arts. Now there's that entire field of fine arts where people say, okay, this is a higher level of art where you're talking about painting, you're talking about sculpture, where there isn't much of a purpose towards it besides just being viewed, whereas you have more practical art, which I talk about more in the culinary arts, depending on what it is, like why is a burger that way? Why, if I'm telling you, think of a burger, not just a plain burger and meat, but think of a burger with toppings on it. Why are they even called toppings? Why don't you put the bun, then the burger meat itself, and then you put the lettuce, the tomatoes, the onions, and the things under the bun? Why do those go on top versus under it? Why don't you just flip the burger over when you're eating it and eat it in a certain way? So that one, there's more functionality in that art. So going back to the first kind of art, I think the first kind of art would, most people would understand would be the La Salle Caves. I might be saying that name wrong. Those are the ones if you guys have seen before, I did this little handy drawing thing to kind of think about some things. So right there, the La Salle Caves in um, France where they had these cave drawings and the cave drawings were of these animals kind of in motion. And that's a key, the animals were in motion. They weren't just depictions of the animal. It wasn't depictions of the carcasses of the animals, which they obviously had a lot of access to the bones. Although in the past, maybe when they killed the animal, they would bring the meat over. Maybe they did bring the entire animal or maybe they used the bones for other things. So they weren't sitting there studying and putting the skulls, but it was the animal in motion with humans and from the studies that have been done, the research that has been done on these caves and how they were used was those art, the art itself was in, were put in caves far away from the actual lodgings of where the people lived, the cave people or the, or the earlier tribes. What they would do is they would often take people who are coming of age or take the younger people and take them to the caves and then light those caves. You know, they bring in the torches and light the caves and then you'd see these animals. And I think it would imprint that knowledge in your mind. It was an easier way to, a more effective way to imprint the very important knowledge of these are the animals we hunt, maybe this is the techniques that we do it, these are the kind of animals, to have a position where they understand this is important somehow versus it just being, let's tell a story, let's tell words. And that's another key thing that I think a separate video needs to come into it. What is the difference with oral art so you're talking about language, you're talking about words, which is going further on to music, versus the visual arts, which is more tactical arts, talking about uh, sculpture. You can get to the point of martial arts, and now we get to the point of interactive arts with video gaming. So yes, this arts field, another, another massive topic that we can get into a lot of things. Already started the love topic, a lot of things I want to discuss in that too as well. Okay, so the first forms of art were, I think we can agree in general, were the Lasalle Caves. A secondary form of art now you're talking is, another point that was brought up was the difference between the way art is treated in the West. I think in the Western world, you're talking about Europe, now in the Americas, 
with the U European Western traditions, even the Eastern traditions. Now you're talking about the Eastern traditions. How is art in Asia, in China? What's the artistic, um, what's artistic history in that? Then you look at the art in Africa, the early art in Africa. Somebody pointed out, and an unfortunate thing with a lot of these these philosophical things is you get in and then people get the contemporary political issues into it. Somebody pointed out that there's a problem in the National Gallery of Art here, the, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. There was an entire section of African art there and they're saying, okay, the masks, the African arts, the fertility goddesses, and there's some sketches here for the fertility goddesses. They they had different, they did this one in action, but they they had a different kind of relationship to the way those societies use them. And they were saying, okay, there's not enough African-American representation, African-American people discussing what the African art is, what this, the masks are, which are more practical in use versus having the art, which is like the Picassos, the da Vin I mean, the Picassos, the Van Goghs, which are more expressive forms of art. It's not something where, for example, you weren't sitting there with the mask on the way, you, okay, the African art is like this mask. So the mask is there, it's done by a dance. There's people come around and they view it. But you're saying the Western art is more practical. It can be studied in a different way. But I'm thinking, is it really that much different? Who had these Picassos? Who had the Western art that we see in museums today? It was people of a higher status. Just how these fertility goddesses, these masks, they were won by the shamans in the time. That dance was done by the shamans. It's not like every single household had a copy of these these fertility goddesses. It's not like every single person in the village knew how to do the dance with whichever shaman mask was on. It was a certain group of people expressing a certain aspect of that culture to the people, and people used to come together in a location to get something out of that artistic expression and experience. And that's a similar thing now. People said, okay, we have a situation where people did not understand, people in the West did not understand necessarily what the African art was. They would get there and they'd say, okay, we don't understand these fertility goddesses. They were talking about how like the Greeks went there to African places and they couldn't understand that and they would destroy the apparently matriarchal fertility goddesses and supplant them with more patriarchal forms of art. I don't really understand when you're coming into those two different aspects, but we can get into that in later videos. But I was thinking, look, when you get to a situation where somebody may not understand what this fertility goddess's purpose was, but then you have situations where you have art where it's just like a plain canvas with like a dot in the middle, and then someone says that is a form of art in a different way. I don't understand the abstract art as much. Somebody else might see that and feel, okay, I'm getting something out of this just how somebody might see that African mask and think, okay, this is more than what it is. This is artistic to a different level. Uh, there's one artist who had an actual thing where it's literally just a urinal and that's considered art. And they see some of this contemporary art and you get to a situation where it's like, okay, what is the point of this? Who is the one that actually says this is art versus this isn't art? So if you are an artist yourself, if you consider yourself someone who appreciates art, what is art to you? How do you define art? When does something become art? When does it become just practical? I think a good question to ask yourself is, can art be accidental? As in, can you, I know they have the Jackson Pollock type thing. Jackson Pollock is a guy I think who used to throw the paint at things and you see people doing that kind of thing. Throwing this paint at the canvas and then whatever it makes, they consider that artistic to something. I'm talking about just complete accident. Can you just slip and fall and then you hit something and then somebody else sees that and says it's art? Does it have to be something intentional in there? And now when it comes to that point, does it have to be something intentional? Does it have to be, does that result have to be what the person intended to begin with? For example, if I just went through here and I showed you what was on my wall and I told you, okay, which was the most effective piece or what is understanding on this, what I was intending to do with this might be completely separate from what you experience from the actual piece. These are some good, um, I think, things to start on. Um, I'm going to <laughs> definitely develop this a little more and also think about personally with myself. I'm going to open a t-shirt store soon and then start selling posters and other material that are somewhat related to, this, to the videos that I'm making and involving some of the art that I have. And just going through that process of understanding, okay, when I'm creating something for myself, when I'm, it's just my own language trying to understand things in my life, 
how do I translate this to a point where it's something that you find worth not just seeing or not just giving time to, but getting enough out of where you're willing to spend your time and money to obtain? What's the process that goes through that? And um, yeah, I think that still goes through to my whole ongoing thing. Different things happen for the same reasons. You know, we both have, we diff different people have questions. Different societies had the need to hunt, to need to find food. But why did some societies get to the point where they're like, okay, we're going to have cave drawings. Why did some societies, different societies had, of course, fertility. They, we all reproduce, we all have these things. Why did some societies decide to focus on fertility goddesses, whereas some other societies might have focused more on creating better spears or creating better tools or things like that. And yeah, so there's a lot of interesting things to discuss here and hope you enjoyed this video. And um, let me know what you define as art. What is art to you? What's the basic aspect that makes something art? What's the lowest thing that this has to be there for art and then what do you consider like the higher the higher boundaries of that? Yeah, so that's the video for today. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And until next video, goodbye.